For 25 years, Lydia wore the ring on her finger, feeling a deep connection to her mother every time she looked at it. The ring became a symbol of love and a tangible reminder of the bond they shared. One day, Lydia decided to take her beloved ring to the local jeweler, Mr. Reynolds, for a small reparation. Mr. Reynolds, with a careful eye, examined the ring, turning it over and inspecting it under a magnifying glass. As he did, a perplexed expression crossed his face, his brow furrowing in confusion. He looked up at Lydia and said, I'm sorry, but this ring shouldn't be in your possession. It's not meant for you to have. Lydia was completely stunned. She explained how her mother's precious ring had broken and prayed that Mr. Reynolds would be able to fix it. He had seen this ring before, and when he revealed to Lydia where this was, her jaw dropped. Mother had lied to her all this time. She could not believe it, but there was no doubt he was telling the truth. But what did the jeweler reveal to Lydia? What was the true story behind the ring, and how would it turn Lydia's life upside down? Before we start, smash the like button and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any news stories. Lydia is now happily married to Jajan. They live a somewhat regular life, but they do struggle a bit financially, and they can make ends meet. But the pair has to work relatively hard. Lydia has had a difficult life. She was an only child and had a very good relationship with her mother, Sarah, because they always had to do everything together. Her father had never really been in the picture, and this had a pretty big effect on Lydia when she was young. Lydia had never even met her biological father. He had left her mother when he found out she had gotten pregnant. While she was in school, her mother worked two jobs in order to provide for them. And when Lydia was old enough, she managed to get a job as well to fill up her free hours in the week. For a long time, it felt like all they had in the world was each other, and this created an incredibly strong bond between them. Sarah didn't feel the need to look for a new husband or boyfriend. Lydia, however, did find the time for a little bit of romance in her life. She met her boyfriend, John, on the job, and they started to really connect with each other quickly. Lydia and Sarah were both saving up as much money as they could. This was all to give Lydia a chance to move out of the house when she was ready. Sarah wanted nothing more than to give her only child the best life possible. But then the unthinkable happened. Sarah suddenly got very sick when Lydia was around 24 years old. Doctors found it difficult to determine what exactly was wrong with her, and Sarah's condition quickly went downhill. Their lives were crashing down around them. All of their savings had gone to Lydia's treatments. The doctors tried everything they could, but somehow Sarah's body refused almost all the medication needed for her condition. After only a few weeks, it was clear that Sarah was not going to make it through. Lydia had to say goodbye to her mother and best friend. It was extremely hard for Lydia to get through this period. Sarah had not been in close contact with other family members as she felt they never tried to help when she was struggling. With so much weight on Lydia's shoulders, it was a miracle that she did not crack under the pressure. The main reason she managed to make it through was with a lot of help from her boyfriend, John. He had been there every step of the way, and it made them even closer than before. After the funeral, the next major thing that had to be taken care of was the inheritance. Sarah was not rich in the slightest bit, and before her passing she had documented that everything she owned would be left to Lydia, and there was one thing Lydia did really want to find, her mother's ring. Sarah had worn it nearly every day, but finding it was turning out to be more of a burden than a blessing. Lydia looked everywhere, as long as the house was still packed with Sarah's belongings, finding the ring would be nearly impossible. So, she decided to sell some things. Sarah didn't own a house, she just rented it. And she, and she barely had any money saved, even less than Lydia had expected. Lydia knew that this ring had a story. Her mother had always told her she had stolen it when she was just a little girl. Apparently, when Sarah was only 12, she had a job cleaning houses for people. This made her a little bit of money that was needed to keep her household going. Most of the homeowners Sarah worked for were really nice to her, and thus she enjoyed spending time there while she made her money. But it seemed that one of the women employing her was always really nasty and mean to Sarah for no particular reason whatsoever. She used to hit Sarah every time she would do something that was not to her satisfaction. She had no other houses to work at and she really needed the money. But during all this, Sarah was constantly looking for other work or other places to clean. And when Sarah finally had another house to work in, she quickly quit the job, but not before stealing a ring she had found on her last day. It was her way of taking a little bit of revenge. Lydia had always taken this story as the truth and loved it when she was younger. It had made her see her mother as a badass and someone who was not afraid. It was an example she had always wanted to follow. 
But Lydia would eventually find out that this was not the whole story. Sara had always worn the ring proudly as a reminder of when she stood up for herself, and now Lydia would be wearing it as a reminder of her mother. Almost all other things she kept from Sara either disappeared in drawers and the shed, or were sold after a while. Lydia had to move on with her life. Luckily, she still had John and... While they probably had the peak months of their relationship in the worst possible time, they did end up staying together and only grew closer through everything that Lydia had to go through. Not even a year after Sarah had passed, the couple had their first child, Sammy. Lydia quickly found out that having a child was the best way to fill the void her mother left in a healthy way. Over the next couple of years, the life of the family was relatively good. Sammy was growing up in good health. Lydia and John had finally saved up enough money to get married and were still extremely happy together. After so many years, Sammy was grown up and ready to leave the house. It was a moment that Lydia was dreading very much. This is because caring for Sammy had been her main purpose in life for years on end. She was afraid of what this major change in lifestyle would bring. One day Lydia tripped on a branch that had fallen out of a tree and was lying on the path now. Lydia had to think in a split second and luckily managed to stick her hand in front of her to cushion her fall. But when Lydia tried to get up, she noticed something that sent a wave of despair through her body. Her mother's ring, it had broken. The ring was still around her finger, where it had been for the last 25 years now, but it had cracked and was no longer a fully connected piece. Lydia felt tears well up in her eyes and decided to get back home immediately. Lydia went that same afternoon. Lydia had never actually been inside this store, and suddenly she realized why. Lydia remembered that when she was younger, her mother had always forbidden her from going into the jewelry shop. Lydia had never known why as a kid, but she hadn't questioned it. Lydia was the only customer in the store when she entered, and the jeweler greeted her with a smile on his face. She explained what had happened and gave the employee the ring. Lydia told him how she had gotten it and how her mother had supposedly gotten it. But when she mentioned at what age her mother had stolen the ring from her employer, the jeweler stopped her and said that it was impossible for that story to be correct. Lydia's jaw dropped when he explained why. If the story was correct, it would mean that her mother had stolen the ring in 1952. But the techniques that were used to make this ring were only applied past 1968. This was the earliest that this ring could have been produced. As Lydia was stunned by what she was being told, the jeweler went on and on about the ring, giving Lydia more details and arguments as to why it was impossible for that ring to be from anywhere near that time period. Then suddenly, while telling his story, the jewelry store employee had a realization and stopped talking. His eyes went wide, and he went to go look for something. He quickly went into the back and took out a small old book. It was a catalog of items they had in the store. But this was a catalog from the year 1968. He looked through a couple of pages and turned the book to Lydia. She could not believe what she was seeing on its pages. It was her mother's ring. But how? The jeweler proclaimed that this was how he knew the ring. Their store had produced this model, but far before his time, and when he was in the back he also did some digging through the store's archives and made a bizarre discovery. This exact ring had been stolen from their store in 1969. He knew that it was this exact ring because the serial number matched up. He looked up at Lydia and said, I'm sorry, but this ring shouldn't be in your possession. Lydia could not believe what she was hearing. Her mother had stolen the ring from this store? But why? And then the realization came to her. 1969 was the year when she was born. Sir Sither had left her mother, and she had already been strapped for cash when he was in the picture. She must have started stealing out of desperation. Sara must have done it for Lydia. But the store clerk had one more thing to say. It was the first positive message of the conversation. He would allow Lydia to keep the ring. The crime happened so long ago that the police wouldn't do anything about it if he tried. But even if they would, he had no intention of taking the ring away from her. He realized the sentimental value that it had to Lydia was way greater than any monetary value it would have to him. And luckily for Lydia, the jeweler was able to make that call because it was now his store. He even offered to repair the ring and restore it to its original quality for free. This way, the memory of her mother stayed the same, and she could keep the items without feeling bad about them. But what she did know, and actually had always known, is that there was nothing that her mother would not do for her, and knowing that made this ring even more special to her. Lydia went on to live a peaceful rest of her life with John by her side. Her son eventually moved back to his hometown to care for his aging parents. The ring stayed with Lydia till the end of her life and was given to her son to propose to his future wife.